Hi. Hi. Tom Wolf had a taste seriously absent. But he's promised he'll bring barbecue and beer, not for everyone. Uh, <laughs> right? We got share. Well, yeah. Please look yeah. up here on the stage, right? Absolutely. Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, I'm John Schneider. I think that was your part. You feel good. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like you've like done this before. Yeah. Um, just a second. Who's that crying? Well, there's no crying in baseball. <laughs> Never mind. I wish I said it. I did not say it. There is no crying in baseball. Hey, I'm going to do a, a photo of you all, if you don't mind. Ooh, that's bright. You're on a, a Panavision photo. Ooh. Or whatever they call that. Pana, panorama. There. So, does anyone have a question? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe Tom will get We do have a microphone, so I can speak for Tom. You, you guys have hung out enough together over the years. You probably know all of his answers. I know his answers all of your answers. Uh, say, like, like, TV TV series what do you think what he does say? <laughs> if anyone has a question, please raise your hand or jump up to the microphone. You want to jump in? Just ask ask them, it's okay. I got the camera. Okay, cool. Um, I was wondering if you're still doing anything with your singing career. I remember when I was a kid, we went to World of Fun, your local, yeah. while you went to concerts. No. Oh, um, thank you for that. I do music. Um, I have a film studio, at least I had until this morning. Uh, a film studio in Louisiana. And... Um, what I do is I, I put music in, into the movies that we make. I find a lot of it and then I try to, uh, occasionally I'll try to write something. I, I, I'm realistic enough to realize I'm a much better song finder than a song writer. Uh, but that's really the extent of it. Uh, Wopat and I do, Wopat and I do uh, concerts occasionally. We're doing one on December 10th in Gulfport, Mississippi. And uh, that's a lot of fun, it's a Christmas one. You can watch uh, he and I in a Christmas concert from my barn uh, at JSS. You can grab a hold of that at uh, cineflixfest.com. Oh, I'm sorry, Cineflix DOD stands for Digital On Demand. Uh, so you can see that. And I'm going to do a, a live concert next, uh, next Thursday night from somewhere. I'm not sure now, but from somewhere with a buddy of mine named Joe Hudson, his guitar and me and, and two stools. And we're just going to do a, a, a nice little live feed concert uh, on, I think it's called Wowza. And you can also find that on Cineflix DOD. And DOD stands for Digital On Demand. Why Hollywood still calls it Video On Demand, I have no idea. Because <laughs> video has not been, except for, now yours is a video. Yours is on chip, right? Yours is digital. Yeah, it's digital. Yeah, there's no video. There's no video in baseball. No tape. No tape. They talk about it. So that's, that's what I do with music now. Toured with music, did a lot of it, I loved it, I, I enjoyed it, but uh, I'm more of, a, uh, more of a filmmaker, more of a storyteller, and uh, truthfully, all my, my great friends from country music have passed away, so I, I, I've got no, no love for the travel of it anymore. Just listen to Conway Twitty, uh, night before last, <clears throat> wow, what, a, what an amazing talent. Listening to John, Johnny Cash, listening to Waylon, uh, great, great stuff. So, I miss it, but I don't see it in the future other than just in the movies. Did you have much interaction with Waylon on the, on the show? Yeah, Waylon came to, uh, after the first couple of years when Waylon, we did a, uh, I can't remember the name of the show, it wasn't Fine Waylon Jennings, but there was an episode where Waylon had a traveling museum, and it got, uh, it got hijacked. As it happens in Hatchet County. As it happens in Hatchet County, yeah. From now Jimmy Carter's limo, Waylon Jennings' uh, uh, car or uh, museum. So it got hijacked, and then uh, uh, we wound up. That's the first time we actually met Waylon. And then he would he would come around from time to time. It was great, great, great guy. We saw his hands for so many years, and we finally got to see him. I know, right? So you don't understand if you show him my hands and not my face on TV. Well. He did not have a face for TV at that point. <laughs> he did later. He got really handsome as he got as he got older. It's cool. Yes, anyone? What do you? Uh, yes. Thank you. Well, this is really a pleasure, Mr. Snyder, and uh, I actually just watched the first season of Dukes of Hazzard this past year. My father-in-law was in the nursing home and enjoyed old shows from the 70s, 80s, Dukes of 
pageant was at the top of his list. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank so you. one of the things I noticed watching it again is, especially the first couple episodes, it was a little edgier right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And we've obviously followed your career through Smallville, as I'm sure most people here have, and your music career. And I've actually enjoyed uh, some of the faith-based films Thank that you. you've done recently. And I wondered if maybe you just kind of talk about that uh, that transition career-wise, as uh, you know, you seem to have even kind of gone a little bit more family-friendly as your career has gone on. Is that intentional, or is that well, kind of just? Then you haven't seen the movies we make. <laughs> uh, I, I might have missed one or two. Well, yeah, yeah. There's one out right now called Like Sun, and you can get that at the at Cineflix, or you can just go to likesunthemovie.com. Uh, my, the, the, uh, I, I'm always up for really a good story, well told, and the, the slew of, of faith-based movies that I did, I thought were very, very well-written scripts. And they just happened to they just happened to come my way. It was interesting. I think because I had done a couple of really I'm, I'm very proud of the uh, the Hallmark the Hallmark movies. Yeah. Come dance at my wedding. Uh, you've got a friend. One about uh, you've got a friend who's about uh, uh, not playing with derby soapbox derby racing. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. But those are I was hired to do those. I wouldn't have accepted them if I didn't think they were really good. October Baby, one of the best. One yes, of the best absolutely. Films. I think truly one of the, one of the best faith-based films ever made. Really love October Baby, uh, as did quite a quite a substantial audience. Um, but I I grew up uh, spending a lot of time with my grandfather, who worked at a funeral home in uh, upstate, well, in Mount Kisco, New York. I mean, I had very I have a very different history than the history of the, the people that I that I have played for other people. So once I turned 50, the stories that, that I don't want to say the stories that I want to tell, but the stories I can't help but tell come, they've been coming out. Like Sun is a story about a, a series of grizzly murders in a, in a rural part of Louisiana uh, where the father and son are both in law enforcement and they both are damn sure that the other one is doing these murders. So, which obviously they can't both be doing it, so it's a bit of a crime drama. Uh, I tend to do things where people are realizing they're a lot more like their parents than they ever thought, and not necessarily in a good way. Um, so I hope you'll give, uh, if you want to know about me, and not about what I do for hire, uh, listen to my music. Because I, I produced all those, but I picked all those songs because they meant something to me. Or watch the films that come out of John Schneider Studios. Okay. Because they are, they are quite unique. I will definitely and check that out. out. Okay. And at the risk of sounding like I'm sucking up, I will say you are definitely hands down my favorite version of Jonathan Kent. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I was a terrible person. 
person. He was an awful person. Me and uh, Craig Lawson, remember Craig Lawson from Body Metal? He was fantastic. Body Metal. Body Metal. Ryan DeMond. Uh, but that was great, a great time. Uh, then I was in the, the last year, I did a two hour one with Randy Travis. Where yeah. We were part of a traveling uh, family yeah. Yeah. Christian group that died in a bus accident. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, you were Rue McClanahan mom. Was, my, was my mom. Right. Yeah, it, was, it was great fun. Martha Williamson wrote uh, yes. and produced all those shows. It was fantastic. Did a lot for the state of Utah. Yeah. Uh, was very, very popular on CBS for years. Yeah. So it was, a, it was a great experience. A great Walmart, show. Walmart still runs some of them. So you can check those out if you want. But go see my movies. Because <laughs> <laughs> I really don't care about their movies anymore. You know? Right? My movie? No. I care about his movies. If, you know, <laughs> if he do so. I like the movies. I know. You do a really good one. I'm going to do, uh, I'm gonna do a movie with him pretty soon. With who? He doesn't know. Yeah. Me? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Cool. Surprise. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> I'm going to charge him supplies. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> I don't remember the joke, but that's the punchline. Yes. It's you. Well, uh, and you're next. You can even just stand in the line there at the mic if you want. Look at that order, just like they do in Canada. Well, now that Tom is here, uh, which one of you is the better singer? Oh, oh no. no. I can't go there. He's got a better voice. He's a better singer. <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. John, with your studio, um, do you take outside scripts? Do we what? Take, take outside, outside scripts? scripts? No. <laughs> unless, unless you no. pay. If you pay, we have, we'll help you make your movie if you come with a budget. But no, I've got, uh, I've got honestly, I've, we've done six now of mine. I've got 20 more. And I, I, you know, I'll be lucky to live long enough to do mine. And, and I made a promise to myself after 50 that no more spending. One of these days I'm going to die telling someone's story and I want it to be mine. But you do help people. Sure. Oh, yeah, it's a great place. But you have to come with your own, with your own budget. We'll help you spend it properly, but we won't give, we won't put any money into so it. So basically, you have to find a producer. Well, to find the money. <laughs> yeah, you have to be financed. I'm asking you for my investment. Well, that's good, but, but you've, got to, you've got to be financed. That's part of it. It's part of the fun, anyway. I mean, I mean doing that is great. No one is going to, uh, I tried for years to get people to, to bless my notions and my ideas and make my movies, and the answer was no. So finally, I said, okay, well, I'll make my own. And there I am. Do you have a website? JohnSchneiderStudios.com. Awesome. Thank you. There you go. Or Cineplex DOD. Or Cineplex DOD, yeah. We have a film festival, too. We're, we're uh, helping to encourage independent filmmakers, but not by not by spending money on them, by providing an opportunity for them to be able to show their films. Somebody's got to ask me a, a question, because he's going to have a pay. Go. Uh, well, I do have one for John, but Tom, I'll tell you, I was uh, <laughs> probably about five years old, you came to the Daryl Starbuck show in Wichita, Kansas, and saying, oh my god, and, uh, that was the first time in my life I ever saw General Lee represent there too, so it was a little five I actually, I was at the Kansas State Fair a couple of times too, Yeah, I never. Made that it. was so much fun, we had a big time, you guys know the fair? Yeah. Yeah. The fair is cool, I'm, I'm, from the fair. I'm from Wisconsin, and the Wisconsin State Fair is just a huge deal there, do they not do napkins with barbecue here? Oh, no. <laughs> here's my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> <That's my favorite. laughs> Go ahead, uh, and, uh, well, John, I want to see uh, Collier come back. I want to see Traveler take on the Bandit Strands AM. Right. So do I. Um, <laughs> I'll write you a check real quick. Well, <laughs> if people would go to Cineflix DOD, if they'd go to Cineflix DOD and get up and, and buy the movies, basically. I want the movies to stand on their own two feet or four tires, right? So in order in order to justify making another one, then the first one, just like any business, if, if you want to make a second flavor soda, then your first one has to pay for it. And so far, Collier has not has not generated enough income to be able to, to justify doing another one. Yeah. It's very sad. But I got this one DVD cell right here. I've had it since oh, thank it you. came out. So. That does not have be made. You are an investor, Mr. Yes, you are. You're an investor. By the way, I think that. Anybody want to jump in? Don't 
omission, don't be shy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, What's that? Actually, I'm stationary, though, with the camera. Um, I heard a rumor that the uh, sliding across the hood of the General Lee actually came from attempting to jump over to the other side? Kind of. It was an accident. And you'll see it in the opening credits where I run down the hill. That's from the second episode. That's from Dave Izzy's song. And we're making our escape from the, uh, from the recording studio. And the thing oh. was, was I, I was coming down and uh, in rehearsal. <laughs> there you go, John. And those are cute, aren't they? So uh, what I did in the rehearsal was I planted my heel on the on the front on the fender and then jumped across. And when I came down to plant my heel on the fender, my heel went, Whoop. and I went skidding across the front. And uh, there was about that much of the antenna left, and it gave me about a four-inch scar right there. But uh, it looked great. I mean, it was right into the camera, and uh, so we ended up doing it a lot. It was a lot of fun. We scratched up the hood a little bit, though. <laughs> Well, yes, I'd like to ask about working on Django and Jane. Do you have any memories sure. of that? Yeah. Ooh, I, I'm sorry, what was the question? I was just going to ask if you can recall working on Django and Jane. Jane for us. <laughs> no, now I'm only 64. Yeah, I can recall. Now, the thing is, um, there's a backstory to it. Because back in the day, when Tarantino was working at the video store, that like everybody knows he did, uh, he would come up to Burbank on Thursday nights and attend James Best, who played Roscoe, but attend his uh, acting class. So he would come up on a Thursday night and go to the oh, bus. Yeah, the bus. Yep. And then Jim would let him sleep in the classroom, basically, there in, in Burbank. And the next day he would come to the set. And this is when, I think he's 18, 19, something like that. So anyway, he had this little bit part in the show, in the movie, and they called my agent and asked if I want to audition for it. So I showed up in my black jeans and my black hat and my black boots and basically did the scene for them. And, and it went great. And then when we shot, we shot it in a day. And it was so much fun. Uh, the thing with Tarantino is he shoots film. He doesn't shoot digital. And it's, it's really exciting. It's like the old days. And he sits right by the camera. He's not over in Video Village 100 yards away. So working with him, and it was a scene with Jane Fox and Christoph and Waltz, and, and uh, they were both terrific. The scene's great. He left it all in. It was, it was the most fun I've had since Deuce. So yeah, thanks for asking. It was a lot of fun. I got a picture. I got a limited supply of pictures yeah. from Jane going, if I run out of limited supply, I'll just grab another limited supply. So <laughs> come by. Come by your booth, and you guys can have photo ops going on later today. Mm -hmm. We do, we do. We already took a bunch with the car, and I must say that these are some of the finest <laughs> professional pictures that I've seen of us. I don't know what he's using for a screen, or if he's like photoshopping automatically, but it looks great. <laughs> <laughs> yes, someone else. <laughs> What's your name? I'm Jack. 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 Right. Oh, well, my buddy's head coach over in college. Barton Wrestling. We have middle nowhere. Anyway, speaking of middle nowhere, you guys have involved some projects with some great landscapes. How's that affected uh, how you build your characters and um, your performance? The the landscape. Well, we're talking about being in Longmire, being in Dukes, um, the natural environment for your shooting. The thing, the thing with Dukes actually was we shot most of them in LA. And the first five were shot in Georgia, and I, I actually really like the look of those. They're a little, a little more gritty, a little more like, like a real film. Um, I think in, in LA it, it became a little cartoonish for a while, and, and that was unfortunate. And you know, in LA, we weren't there for those. You got <laughs> in LA, you got to paint the grass green because it's not like a retard. Yeah. So, so. In, in, in uh, Longmire now, they make it in, in New Mexico, and that is breathtaking. That's the most fun. I always at least schedule at least one extra day so I can rent a motorcycle and drive around. But that stuff is great. Where's the best place you shop? I love Louisiana. I just do. Uh, for me, it's about, because uh, we make films there, uh, it's about disguising the process as much as possible, not having a lot of people 
not having trailers and not having things that make you realize you're, from an acting standpoint, realize you're on a set. Uh, because we're basically children and we're playing. Actors are, are playing some role and, and they're really enjoying it for these couple of minutes for this take during this, this, uh, this film experience. And as a director, I like to, as, as an actor, I love to ignore the pomp and circumstance of what's going on. And as a, as a director, I like to just get rid of it. Because I want to I catch people enjoying themselves or in an argument or, you know, whatever it is that they're supposed to be doing. Because uh, my, my belief is when all else fails, act. So we should believe that what we're doing at least to some degree is real and actually happening. The environment has a lot to do with that. In my place in Louisiana, there's cypress leaves and cypress trees and beautiful, wonderful vistas and water. Uh, water everywhere, water everywhere, uh, especially right now. Uh, but I think, I think it's very important. That's why I don't like to just film on a sound stage. A lot of people like sound stages, but a sound stage is, is it's hard to, it's hard to believe what you're doing is real when you've got lights and walls that go away and, and uh, a cappuccino machine sitting right over there and you're supposed to be starving in a, in a hogan somewhere. <laughs> Think how many days we spent on the, on the set, though, in a car pretending we were driving. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's, maybe that's why I don't like to do that. <laughs> I oh, well, I did just do that to uh, yeah. the Trace Lecce show. We did a bunch of blue screen oh, stuff. Good. We used to sing together a lot while we were doing that stuff, and we would just drive everybody nuts. But it was fun, and actually, fun. Dukes, Dukes really, Look, we're still singing the same way. A lot of the same stuff, and uh, you know, they would like blow up. You didn't hear it, he just told me to shut up. I did. Hey, Tom, guess what? Shut up. Shh. Ah, did you shush me? Uh, so, you know, there was a lot of things you'd like to have a, a guys with three branches making shadows go over the car and they would have a four by four on the front fender so they could make the car rock. It was fun. It was fun. It was make believe, but it was a lot of fun. Somebody said, over there. Did either of you take the General Lee out for a joyride? When always. <laughs> <laughs> always, always, always. I enjoyed that a lot. We had a. Uh, I guess it was a scene dock by the, uh, the L.A. River there in, uh, in Burbank, and I would, it was a nice long stretch of concrete, and I had gotten the car up, whichever one happened to start with a screwdriver. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or alligator clips. Um, 60, 70 miles an hour on the scene dock. But that was before, really before the world went crazy, and, and now you can't, uh, you can't do anything. They won't. Probably we could. I don't think we could make the Dukes of Hazzard. They would be in the way of the car. Somebody would drive the car where we're supposed to start and <laughs> they'd pick it up. I mean, it would be. It was a different day. There were many times where they, they attached the car to the. I'm sorry, the camera to the car and gave us the slate, which is this marker. We drive off by ourselves. No camera crew. Yeah. No, and microphones and a camera. We'd shoot the scene two or three times, come back, and they'd say, How was it? <laughs> it's perfect for news. Must be good. The front right tire is flat, so it must have worked. It was, it was amazing. It was an awful lot of fun. And if you think about it, I mean, those of you who are of a certain age, before we did the Dukes, starting in 79 through 85, you never saw a car commercial where the car got in the air. You never saw a car commercial where they peeled out or where it slid sideways. None of that stuff ever existed in commercials until we did it. And our guys were the best. Give it a shot. Those that are still kicking. One of our guys has done uh, all of the uh, second unit stuff for Fast and Furious. All of them. Jack Gill has done all of those. Corey Eubanks is one of the, one of the I think he worked with Michael Bay and did all of those great BMW commercials years ago. He's Bob for you really old folks like us. Bob Eubanks from the uh, Newlywood game. His son. Done a lot of stuff with What's Baxter Craig? family. What's that? Craig. Craig Senior? Baxter. Oh, Craig. <laughs> I'm sure he's directing stuff. He did Action Jackson. And I think he directed Second Union on Perfect Storm. But anyway, the Dukes folks went on to do a lot of things. A lot of things. And they're still, they're still, those that are still kicking are still kicking strong.
We scared a couple off, too. I know, I'm scared. Yeah. It's okay. I don't know. You got to use the restroom. That's all. <laughs> See you. Uh, who else? You give up? No, what up? <laughs> Did you guys ever catch up with Daisy? Uh, excuse me? Do we what? Did we catch up? Did we talk to you. She's here yeah. all the time. Yeah. 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 She's been working on a, a soap opera for the young and use, the young and restless. <laughs> <laughs> It's the old and useless. <laughs> 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 no one wrestled to ask her which one she was. <clears throat> which one? <laughs> so we're going to actually be working with her in, in a, about a month. We're going to be in Salt Lake City. If you feel like driving, hey, it's a, place it's a pretty beautiful, beautiful town. It is. Beautiful town. Go by the Salt Lake City. What's up? About how many General Lees did they need to keep on set? Because I heard that they would, when they would jump it, they would end up wrecking it when it landed, so they'd have to swap no. out. No. <laughs> <laughs> so how many did they keep? 13. 13. Always. Oh, 13. 13. No, we had 13 ready at all times. 13. And we went through 329. Wow. Wow. No, stop it. <laughs> and then there were there were 16 in a, in a field that a guy named Wayne Wooten, I don't know what I'm talking about. A guy named Wayne, Wayne Wooten talked the. Uh, Wayne Wooten? Wayne Wooten talked so the guy Atlanta. Atlanta. Oh, yes. Now, boys. Talk to uh, talk to Warner Brothers and the Values Eight Brothers out of, and those were ones that were ready for next season, but there wasn't a next season. So it's arguable whether or not whether or not any of those cars were actually in the show. Probably a couple, but impossible to tell. And at that point, they'd already been sitting out in the, in the heat we, for ten years. Yeah. Weeds right next to Boss Hogg's only Cadillac. I think we only had there one. was only one. I think so. Gold inside the trunk and white outside. Wow. Yeah, Sir, boys. There was only one because you never let you guys drive. Uh, <laughs> That's right. How does the Cadillac do? No. I never drove the Cadillac. Sir. How does the two of you explain that you on Longmire, you on Dukes of Hazard, and both of you on Dukes of Hazard, how do you guys end up in such underpopulated but crime ridden counties? <laughs> <laughs> Just one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, actually, you know, the crime was, the crime, in, especially in Hazard County, was kind of approximate anyway. Well, and there was a lot of times where it would be outsiders bringing their, their scheme in. And there was a number of times, and, and I've always been proud of it, that, that uh, Bo and Luke would rescue Boss and Roscoe from some scheme that went askew. Yeah. And uh, that, I thought, was a really important part of our show is that even though they constantly contrived to try and get us in jail, we still, we love them. <laughs> so much. You guys love your enemies just like it says you're supposed to do. Exactly. Exactly. And they would come to our rescue occasionally too. If things really got bad. As far as Longmire goes, I'm surprised that county wasn't depopulated. Well, yeah. He's a great guy though, I tell you. Bob Taylor, the guy who plays, the Australian who plays the lead, a really, really nice man. And the thing that people don't know about him is that he bought a place, he bought a bunch of land in downtown um, Sydney in Australia, and they made a, a, a garden, a garden for vegetables for homeless people and stuff like that. Oh, it's huge. It's two or three acres, and it's been there for 25 years. 